don't know what you've got till it's gone. She's inspired songwriters from Prince to Madonna with lyrics that touch the heart and mind. She's a master of words and a master of music, and she's just one of the greatest. Today we'll celebrate 30 years of great words and music with one of the most original voices of our generation. Meet Joni Mitchell this Wednesday morning, January 3rd. From CBS News in New York, this is CBS This Morning. Live from West 57th Street in the center of Manhattan, I'm Mark McEwen in the CBS Broadcast Center. And now, here are Paula Zahn and in for Harry Smith, John Roberts. Welcome to all of you, and welcome back to CBS This Morning. Coming up, an hour of pure enjoyment. Joni Mitchell will sing for us. She yeah. might even chat with us, too. Yeah, this is very rare. She doesn't do this a whole lot. We're going to find out where she finds the inspiration for her music and for her lyrics. And we're going to check in with Mark McEwen to find out how he pulled this one off. An old <laughs> friend of Joni Mitchell's. Well, I've been an admirer of her for a thousand years, and it's an honor to have her on our show. I'm, I'm real pleased. Morning to both of you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Joni. Well... Now, for a real treat, Joni Mitchell is one of a kind, a singer who bears her soul through her art. Her latest CD is Turbulent Indigo, and recently, Harry, Paul, and I spent some time with this woman whose music is pure magic. I've looked at life from both sides now, on win and lose, and still somehow... Joni Mitchell first looked at life from her family's home in Saskatoon, Canada. An only child who was diagnosed with polio, she sought refuge in her words and music. Her unique abilities were apparent early on. Her high school yearbook notes Joni's unequaled artistic talent. Since the mid-60s, she's recorded 17 albums of her own tunes, songs that dare to reveal her most intimate thoughts and give voice to her most personal feelings. He said, we'll lighten up your heavy load. And he sent me then to the refuge of the road. As a woman in a traditionally male industry at a time when British bands rocked the charts, a lesser talent might have been silenced. But Mitchell endured and has made a lasting impression on her art. Help me, I think I'm falling in love too fast. Our romantics meet the same fate someday. Cynical and drunk and boring someone in some dark cafe. Oh, honey, you turn me on. I'm the radio. Got a break. Unbelievable. We got a break. Right in the middle of this Hollywood honey. Don't it always seem to go? You don't know what you've got till it's gone. They pay paradise, put up a parking lot. Joni's fans include many of today's most popular songwriters, including Peter Gabriel, Prince, Madonna, and Melissa Etheridge, among her greatest admirers. She is the greatest female songwriter. She has continuously and courageously experimented, putting substance before style, passion before packaging, and all the time creating wonderful pictures with her songs. And sex sells everything. Sex kills. Folk, pop, blues, jazz. Joni's tackled them all with passion, and today she continues to write and record songs that make a difference. Ladies and gentlemen, Joni Mitchell. Goodbye. No. <laughs> Hello, Joni. Good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you Good again. Good to see you again. Well, you see the reaction that you get from your fans and you have from the very beginning. What I'd like to know is, when you began to put your thoughts and uh, your innermost feelings down on paper and with guitar, where did you think it would go? What made you 
want to do what you do with that instrument and with the instrument, your voice. Okay, it's two departments, isn't it? The, yes, it the, is. the music and the poetry. Um, let's see. Well, as a child, uh, I think that the, the moment of, of inspiration came uh, at a, a Kirk Douglas movie called The Story of Three Loves, which had as its theme song a piece by Rachmaninoff. And this melody just thrilled me. And that was before albums. And there was a department store in the town that had listening booths. And you could go in and take out a 78 and go into a glass booth and listen to it. And I used to go down and listen to that beautiful melody. And after that, I dreamed that I could play the piano beautifully and drive a car. Those were my two <laughs> recurring things. And um, so I took piano lessons briefly, but the piano teacher didn't understand that I wanted to compose. She said, oh, why would you want to play by ear when you can have the masters under your fingertips? And she wrapped my knuckles with a ruler, which was the way they taught in those days, but I didn't know that. I took it personally. So she kind of bruised my desire to play the piano beautifully until I was in my 20s. Actually, until I began to record, I picked the piano up again. So it, there was an early desire to, to chain chromatic colors. And uh, as far as the poetry went, I, I never liked poetry, but I wrote it anyway, <laughs> secretly. <laughs> <laughs> and at a certain point, I realized that you could put the two together. As for playing the guitar, I picked that up kind of to sing uh, rather rowdy songs at Wienerosts, which was <laughs> the source of our entertainment as a teenager in Saskatchewan, you know, grab some beer, go out in the bush and sit around and sing these songs. So I didn't really have any ambition. At that time, it, it, and from where I come from, it, it didn't seem even like a remote possibility. It wasn't a possible dream. Kids now say, oh, I, you hear them interviewed and they say, oh, I always knew as a small child I was going to be on television. Well, we didn't have television when I was a small child. so. I guess the, the one reason why your, your songs talk to so many of us is that you deal with your own emotions in, in such an honest way. And you sing about things a lot of us can't even talk about. In the process of writing these songs, does it sometimes become so invasive that it's difficult for you to face your own emotions? Or are you oh, completely yeah. free as you write? Well, it depends. I mean, sometimes... Um I, I guess I am, in this sense, a true artist in that I've, I feel that it's better to sacrifice myself to the song than someone else. You know, I can, I can forgive myself for revealing myself, whereas it, in sometimes very simple portraits that I don't think are... Like David Geffen had a hard time with Free Man in Paris for a long time. He was offended by it initially, and yet it doesn't reveal anything unattractive about him. You should explain for people who don't understand what that lyric line meant and why. Free Man in Paris? For that to, yes. Well, David and I went to the Cannes Film Festival. David was in his, David Geffen, Geffen Records. We have a long history of a relationship, but he began as my agent. And then when he set up his own record company, the first one being Asylum Records, we went to the Cannes Film Festival one time, and, and it was his first time in Paris. And, and um, after we returned, David and I were roommates at that time, you know, I can remember him lamenting, oh, I want to go back to Paris, I want to go back to Paris, and he was kind of drowning in business responsibility. That's how I recall it. And the, the song contains a lot of... Uh, his feelings in his own words at that time, you know, I kind of scribed them. And initially he, he didn't really want to be, not that I put his name on it, everybody knows it now because the press always ferrets these things out, but... Because um, you were dealing with sexuality and... and well, I don't... One's would, was it? That, is there a sexuality that's... I don't know, it just seems to me like a longing to be back, you know, on the Champs-Élysées, you know. It, it became a symbol, I think, of... Uh, freedom as opposed to business responsibility. So it's just, it's easier to do a portrait of myself um, and my own foibles, which also helps to prevent too much worship. I'm not comfortable with being too pedestaled. You know, I like my freedom in the street. I like to walk around unchaperoned, so to speak, and, and feel that I can handle that. And blessedly, I've never had that much fame so that you know, and I came after the screaming eras, you know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of screamers here today, though. This is fame. This is fame. We're going to take a short break mm -hmm. here, and we'll be right back with more with Joni Mitchell.
And we are delighted to be spending some time with Joni Mitchell. Welcome back. You have so many fans here. exactly where we were when we have heard most of your songs for the first time. This gentleman, though, has lost track how many years he's been enjoying your music. 23, 24, 25? Somewhere around there. And I've been waiting all those 20, 23 years to ask you this one question. Okay. Will you marry me? <laughs> To wrestle three out of five falls, I, and I'm married. I'll wrestle you for Joni. So I want her to marry me. <laughs> She'll sing you an answer later, right? Here we got one right Thank here. Thank you very right. much. Over the album, Joni, with the nearly 20 albums that you've done, you've never actually compiled a greatest hits collection. But for a while, we've been hearing about this box set. Is there any news on that? Well, um, the greatest hits, I, I declined in putting that together because I don't want to kill my catalog. So I've been fighting the companies yeah. to put it off. And in, and in fact, I haven't had that many hits. So I've had, <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't had that much incentive. But now there's a lot of songs that, that I think could have been airplay, but the companies for one reason or another didn't gear up for them. I mean, I actually could make one at this point. The box set is quite a project. It's a retrospective, and, uh, and I will do that in the future, but it, it, I don't have the time right now. I'm, I'm on to the next album first. So. Joni, how much pressure did you have over the years to come up with hits? Because it is a hit-run, hit-driven industry, and how much did you have to fight that? Um, I wasn't under really... I was under in, in a unique kind of circumstance in that I didn't have a producer even for, for many records. I, I did a couple of things. I did one cut with a producer and it was such a dreadful experience. I thought, oh no, it's another knuckle wrapper. If I have to do this, it's gonna kill my love of music again. You know, like a, nobody, I, I have a painter's vanity. It's like you, you wouldn't have somebody putting a stroke on your canvas, so why would you have a, somebody putting a stroke on your music? I mean, you do have collaborators and you cut them a certain amount of expressive slack and that's plenty good enough. Well, anyway, without a producer, which is sometimes the go-between in the company and no way in our even artists' representation in the studio, uh, I was left pretty much to my own devices. And as for the release of singles, I, that's the one area where I had no say. So they'd release one and um, nothing much would generally happen. And I'm not a large record sale seller, so they didn't put a lot of money behind promoting it either. And as John Lennon said to me one time, Oh, put some fiddles on it. You want a hit, don't you? <laughs> Why do you let other people have your hits for you? <laughs> but other people seem to have better luck with my songs in terms of uh, the, the top ten. Well, than both I do. sides now has been recorded, I think, 300 and change times. That's so. all. Yeah. We got to take a break. We'll be back right after this. All right, now let's get back to Harry Smith and more of our recent visit with Joni Mitchell. She has written and recorded songs that have been more than just hits. A Joni Mitchell song says something and means something, and Joni Mitchell is here to sing for us. Just let things slide. The 
station master shuffling cards Boxcars are banging in the yards Jealous loving will make you crazy If you can't find your goodness Cause you lost your heart Cause you lost your heart Or a strong cat without claws Or any reason to raise you And I found this empty seat In this crowded waiting room I found everybody waiting There's an old man sleeping on his banks Women with a teased up kind of hair Kids with the jitters in their legs And those wide, wide open stairs And the kids got Cokes and chocolate bars There's a thin man smoking a fat cigar Jealous loving will make you crazy If you can't find your goodness Cause you lost your heart Cause you lost your heart Joni Mitchell is back with us. I want you to see what a diehard fan is all about here. Oh, look at that. The 79 that. Miles of Isles tour. Uh, <laughs> I still have it. I can't fit in it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and the question down here. When you're at home, what's your favorite food to prepare for yourself? Oh, let's see. Um, your music speaks for itself. <laughs> well, I make a concoction that I call apple oink. And what it is, it's pork chops, but I poach them in, in cran apple juice with onions and garlic and sliced apples so that it comes down to kind of an apple sauce. And I poach it then I, under a lid. Then I take the lid off and let it caramelize for the last few seconds, but you have to watch it so it doesn't burn. That's pretty good. Cooking with joy. <laughs> apple oil. <white. laughs> Everybody I know, uh, no matter how old they get, has times when they have to listen to your albums. What do you do when you want to listen to a Joni Mitchell song? Do you write a new one? Do you listen to your music? Good question. Oh, well, I, 
I don't look back too much, you know, like I'm going to have to because of the box set. And I have all my tapes in my car. It looks like that's all I listen to. But they've been there a long time because I, I haven't been able to. This, it's like this is your life, you know. I have to go over this whole <laughs> bulk of material. Um, yeah, I go forward. You know, usually the, the song that interests me the most is what I'm trying to describe that just happened. Your yeah. songs are everybody's life, so that's what's so We all had the discussion a minute or two ago that we feel like at some point in all of our lives, you have saved yeah. our lives. So oh, that's... Right. Tony, one thing, one thing I want to mention, the people who came out when you did uh, musically, Bob Dylan, uh, Crosby, Graham Nash, you, not only do you have music that, that says something, but your heart seems to always be in the right place when it comes to helping others, being benevolent. Uh, do you see that benevolence in other artists today? Well, to tell you the truth, uh, you know, you absorb most of your music when you're young. That's when you're the most keen on it and you're the most open to it. And, and recently, um, I haven't been listening to much. There's music everywhere you go now. You know, if you want to hear some music, roll down your window in L.A. traffic. You know, you <laughs> what this guy's listening to, and I mean, it's in stores, it's everywhere. So I've gone through a period uh, in the last year of spending my evenings in silence, which, which has created uh, the, the music that I'm now making. It's interesting what happened by not listening to music. It, there's a lot of 40s influences coming into it, like in the melodies and in the chord progressions. And um, so it has been a time not really to absorb that much of what is new. So I can't speak very um, uh, in, in an informed way about what's happening these days. Got another question for you over here. Hi. I want to know what you think of the uh, performance artist John Kelly's use of your work. And also, in, in addition to your enormous cultural place in our lives, what it feels like to officially have been brought into the gay pantheon of divas. No. <laughs> well, I, I've seen pictures of him, but I, I didn't. Uh, I, I meant to go and see his performance in Los Angeles, and things conspired. So I've not been an eyewitness to it, but I think it's fun. He's great. Yeah. He, he had, didn't he have George O'Keefe as his piano player at the L.A. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he does you I in think drag so. sometimes, and yeah. other times he, he does your, your work totally straight and very oh. and takes you quite seriously. It's very beautiful. Well, some of the lyrics are, are narrative for him, so they're not, they're, they don't, they're not gender oriented. They could be, it takes very little, maybe one word to change it anyway. Okay. So no, I'm honored. I think that's great. We want to hear you play some more in just a minute, all right? Christmas Day, I couldn't feel my hands or feet. I shouldn't have come. She made me pay for gleaming with Donald down her street. She put blame on him and shame on me. She made it all seem so tawdry and cheap. Mama, open up your gifts, you know Happiness is the best Facelift I mean, after all, she introduced us Oh, but she regrets that now Shacked up downtown, making love with all the license. Same old sacred cow. She said, Did you come home to disgrace us? I said, Why is this joy not allowed? For God's sakes, I'm middle aged mama, and time moves swift, and you know, happiness is the best.
much courage Love takes so much shit She said you've seen too many movies, Joni She said snap out of it Oh, the cold winds blew At our room with a view How helpful and hopeful and candlelit Kiss the angels and the moon eclipsed, you know Happiness is the best baseless We pushed the bed up to the window To see the Christmas lights On the east bank, across the steaming river Between the bridges lit up Paris like This river has run through both our lives Between these banks of our continuing delights Bless us, don't let us lose the drift, you know Happiness is the best Thank you. 